Hello and welcome to another episode of the Top 3 Pen series. My name is Shows Oppelbaum and every Monday we post a new video about the Top 3 Pens. Up, up, up. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Top 3 Pen series. My name is Shows Oppelbaum and every Monday we post a new video about the personal Top 3 Pens of Penfluencers. If you do not want to miss out on the video, subscribe to our YouTube channel now. This week you're going to find out the top 3 favorite pens of Leo. Who is Leo? He is probably better known as Inquisitive Quill. Under that name he's been posting YouTube videos about fountain pens and fountain pen related topics for 7 years already. And if that's not impressive enough, he's also posting a pen picture for you on Instagram every day. Let's see which 3 pens this experienced fountain pen user loves the most. Hello, I'm Leo from Inquisitive Quill on YouTube and Instagram. And today I'm going to talk about my three favorite pens. Now, the first pen that came to mind was the Pilot Custom 823. I've had this pen for the longest time. Uh, it was probably my fourth or fifth pen ever and maybe even my first 14k uh, like, like my first golden air fountain pen uh, at that time uh, having used a lot of other stationery having a brown pen was a very revolutionary thing for me uh, so that was that, that was very experimental for, for for a newbie fountain pen user and it came with a 14k f nib which uh, I used for quite a while, and then I found that I could uh, buy other size 15 Pilot uh, pens and swap them on. So I did what was all the rage at that time, and probably still is pretty popular, although now it's more like a factory option instead of a custom option, which was I got a 743 with an FA nib, and I put it in, and had a lot of bouncy bouncy fun, uh, wrote really bad flex writing, these days still not that good, but uh, actually I prefer the stiffer like, like size 15 uh, nibs from their 18k range, which can be found on pens like the, the Urushi coated 845s or the fancy wood custom itchy custom enju uh, models. So, Eight to three. I also liked how it has amazing ink capacity. Now, I am a pretty big pilot, pilot fan, as you can see, but modern pilot converters leave a lot to be desired for. The the, the Con 50, 40, 70 are, they either have really poor capacity or they are really annoying to clean, like fully clean. Especially, especially the Con 70, it has a weird chamber up there, uh, way up in, in the button. Uh, button system that really likes to uh, keep ink inside and so even though the entire clear chamber looks clean you press it once and then more ink comes out so that's why this is way better the, 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 vac, the vac system you just dunk it in water press a few times and it's pretty much like fully clean at that point it takes at most like one or two minutes so has never uh, it's never left rotation and most of the time I color coordinate inks inside it it has mostly carried brown inks in the early days I remember putting in Mont Blanc toffee brown and maybe even some non brown like the nano pigment sailor inks but uh, then for quite a few years I had platinum pigment sepia uh, and when that ran out I have now switched over to sailor storia lion which is a light brown uh, pigment ink from from Sailor. It's also waterproof. So, Pilot Custom 83. My second pick, which was also a pretty easy decision, was the M800. Uh, it, the M800 was not my first Pelican. I actually picked up a an M215 first, and then an M400 White Tortoise. Uh, but I, I was pretty okay with it, even though it was a bit smaller than than the Sailors that I liked at that time. And uh, the most unfortunate thing happened, which was I went to a pen meet 
and I got to try someone else's M800 and it turns out I really like the slice. So I end up getting one and a few more and a lot of other ones that they're up there all around the house. Um, I don't really chase the, the colors much, mostly I'm interested in uh, trying out all different nibs because Pelican has made a lot of nibs uh, in their spare time. And whereas uh, the Pilot, the, the fine nibs are really good uh, for Pelicans, I have really enjoyed their wider nibs like the modern M800 IB Italic Broad and their slightly older um, like BBs, OBBs, O3Bs. Uh, those have been really fun as well. The, the, the modern e EF is also pretty good, but uh, mostly I, I like Pelican for their, their, their fat nibs. And so currently on here I've got an OBB. I also like the transparency in the body. It's pretty easy just to bring up the light just to see how much ink you have left. I mean, obviously it's way easy on this, but uh, it's also pretty easy. At least I don't have to unscrew the body and then squint at the tiny converter. So uh, being able to swap nib is really great because I get to uh, use the same fill of ink and then try it amongst different different nibs. The small downside is uh, when you have to clean the M800. It's, I mean, the piston mechanism is great. It's not the best for cleaning. It's not as good as the, the backfill system or just throwing away or replacing a cartridge. Um, when I clean it, I, in the beginning, I used to spend like 10, 20 minutes in the toilet just, just squeaking away at the piston just to push water in and out. But these days, I just unscrew the unit, use a syringe full of water to, to hose down the inside and then wipe down any remaining residue with, with tissue paper. I mean, these days it's all about efficiency. So, A100, also a, also a common, also a common, uh, a, a common sight in my regular, in my regular everyday carry. Uh, this particular copy, it has mild scratches on the body. Uh, they're just surface scratches, and this was because I brought this along with me to San Francisco, and I was taking photos of the pen with the Golden Gate Bridge in the background. It was on some rocks, and it was quite a windy day. And, and I may have scratched up slightly, but that's more like a, a a souvenir from a holiday, and it's not like I can't buffer out later when I want to. But otherwise, it's another everyday pen. For the third spot, that was a little bit trickier. Uh, I have a lot of pens I really like, but I eventually settled upon uh, the the Nakaya Piccolo Cigar uh, in Shinkin Tosoge. And uh, this was not my first Nakaya. My first Nakaya was, uh, I think it was a Doray, a green black one. Uh, that was, uh, feels good. So whereas this was not my first Nakaya, nor my first Urushi, because of that pen, this one uh, was the first pen where I felt that a lot of effort had been put into its production. Um, someone had to layer the pen with lots of Urushi and then carve out the floral and vine pattern without making a mistake and then fill them in with platinum and gold dust and also do it for the section and the threading. He also comes with a very beautiful um, Nakaya or in this case the Nakata because the, 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 the boss of platinum was, 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 was a Nakata uh, and yeah, I, it looks great. It feels amazing because you can actually feel the, the, the handiwork that's gone into this. And um, and it, this is a very similar size to one of the pens uh, that I really liked back then, which was the Sailor 21K Pro Gear. I mean, I still like them. Um, I just don't use them as often as I do these other ones. So there you go. Uh, three of Leo's favorite pens. 823, M100, and a Piccolo Cigar. Something for, something for everyone. So, hope you guys enjoyed that, and have a good
have a good day.